In this tutorial, I'm going to cover some best practices for building client-side code. When you're writing client code using the JAXRS client API, there are a few things that are good to follow. It's not necessary, but it helps you in the long run. So I'm just going to cover some of those best practices. Uh, the first thing is, like I mentioned before, you have one instance of a client that you use for your requests. The other thing that you do is when you do a client.target, you don't just create a target for the whole URL. What you see happening over here, which is the whole hardcoded URL, is not good practice. What you do instead is create a base URL target that you can add on to. So consider something like this. Let's say I do a client dot target, and I don't pass in the whole URL over here. What I do is I pass the base URL, which is basically the context. So this would be the base URL because this is common for all the APIs in the Messenger application. So you would have something like this prefixing all the URLs. So you basically separate that out and create a web target object, which is, I'd call it base target. We've learned in the previous tutorial that when you do a client.target, you get a web target, right? So this is what you do first. The next thing you do is, take the base web target and add on the rest of the path to it. So if I were to say base target dot, there is a path, let me spell base target with the right case here. Now there is a path method to the base target, which takes in a path segment that gets added on to this. So in this case, we have messages. So I'm gonna pass messages here. And now this is my new target for the messages API. So I'm gonna assign it to a new local variable called messages target, okay? Now what this does is it creates a target for all my messages interactions, right? So this is a base target for all web interactions with the messenger API. This is gonna be a target for all my messages interactions. Now that I have this, I can add on to this, right? Now, if I were to say I wanna get a particular message ID, I could do a couple of things. One thing I could do is messages target dot, again, I do a path and I pass in two. Now this is gonna get me a target for the message ID two. Okay, and if you wanted message ID three, I gotta do a messages target dot path of three. This will work, but it's kind of cumbersome. What you can do instead is something like this. Now let me delete this. I'm gonna say web target, single message target equals messages target dot path, and I can pass in a placeholder. Okay, I can pass in message ID over here, okay? Now, this gives me a generic web target for any message ID. I can actually plug in this message ID later. If you remember, for, you know, the curly braces here kind of indicate a variable portion of the path, right? It happens on the server and there is a similar convention here on the client as well. Now, when you get a single message target over here in the end, what this points to is, HTTP, localhost 8080, advanced, JAX 06, web API, which is your root context, slash messages, slash message ID variable. Okay, so now we can plug in this variable portion with whatever you want. So rather than doing client.target, I do a single message target dot, and there is the resolve template. If you remember the HATOS video from the previous course, you saw something similar. The same thing applies here as well. Resolve template lets you take a template URL which, is, which could contain variable portions and replaces it with the actual value. So here you're resolving template. You're saying wherever you see a message ID variable, replace it with the message ID two. All right, now when you do a resolve template, you still get a web target back and then you do a request and you do a get like before, so that at the end, what you get 
is message ID 2. All right, so let's test this out. I'm going to save this and run this again. We still get Hello Jersey. So the cool thing about this is you don't have to create multiple web targets. Now I can do, I can create a copy of this thing. I'll say message one, I'll call this message two, or let me flip this around. Message one is the same thing with ID one. Message two is the same thing with ID two. So you basically have a bit more extensible way of creating this. So once you get hold of a single message target over here that you prepared with a variable, you can plug in different values here and have that executed. So I'm gonna print these two. Now it should return me the two messages over here. And there you go, it does. So this is uh, a recommended way of managing your target instances in your REST API client.